Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for teaching us these powerful truths. How you have empowered us, regenerated us, made us new, a new creation that we are able to operate with the new nature, new power in this world and live a victorious life. Thank you and praise you for this. In the glorious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yesterday we started a teaching called the law of confession. And we see that God using words out of his mouth with his wisdom have been able to create this world. He spoke the word filled with wisdom and darkness was cast out and light came into the world and everything he created it was good. He even created man and blessed man and said to man from now on you shall be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish and have dominion over all things. So man was created in the likeness and image of God. So man is not God, but he is like God. And therefore, God has given to man a system by which he also can speak words out of his mouth. And those words have power to create things for him. Now this man, when he create, when God created, he said, it is good. So everything that God created was good. And the plan of God is that he has given to man a model called the Garden of Eden with seed bearing in every creation that man has to use this and from one model called the Garden of Eden, he is supposed to multiply the Garden of Eden and cover up the whole earth. Now when man was created, God said a word to man that everything in this garden is yours. I give it to you. Not that you sweated for it, but I love you and therefore I give it to you as a gift. But there's one thing that you must do. You shall not eat the fruit of this one tree that gives you the knowledge of good and evil. But the day you eat it, you will surely die. Now we know how Satan deceived Eve and Adam and they both ate the fruit of the tree. And the moment they ate it, the Bible says the eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked. So those so for the first time, the word came, I was afraid of you. So even though they disobeyed God, God never abandoned them. He came in search of them. And when he called Adam, Adam hid behind the tree along with Eve. And he said, I was afraid. Second thing, I was ashamed. And the third thing, the woman that you gave me, is the one who tempted me to eat it and he blamed Eve for his action. Now the same three things happen in our life even today. God never created us to be fearful. He never created us to be shameful and he never created us to put the blame on somebody else. And that is what we experience every day in our life. Now man lost his true identity and man now became extremely sinful, blaming others for his situation. All the time living instead of glory, is living a shameful life. And instead of being bold and courageous and confident and believing in faith, 
he now lives with fear, anxiety and worry. Now that's not God's plan for man. And from then on, the law of love got deactivated and the law of lust was activated because of sin, because of disobedience. So God sends his son Jesus to save mankind. If you ask anybody, why did Jesus come? He came to forgive us our sins. Is that right? Most of the people will say he came to forgive us our sins. He not only came to forgive us our sins, but he came to restore us back to that glory that we had lost because of Adam's sin. So when the glory is restored, man does not need to live by fear. Man doesn't live a shameful life, but a glorious supernatural life. And third, man stops putting blame on one another, but takes responsibility and changes his life. That was his original life. So we need to understand that when man fell into sin, that is Adam, his disobedience brought sin nature in us and man who was a spirit being now became a carnal being. That means he cannot get connected to God with his sin nature and therefore man now began to live no longer on spirit connection but he began to live his life based on sense connection that is he is a spirit being who is supposed to live a supernatural life a spiritual life but now the same man because his spirit is dead he has no other option but to live his life based on senses which is the most lowest life so Jesus has to come and not only forgive us our sins the penalty to be paid but much more than that he has to restore to man all that he had lost in the garden of Eden his identity and that is why the Bible teaches us that we in Christ have got a new identity that is in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. So if anyone is in Christ, so if anyone is in Christ there is a new creation. There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything old as passed away. Now, if anyone is in Christ. Now the question is, what is your identity? Are you in Christ? Or are you yourself? So as long as you are yourself, you are a carnal person who operates with your senses and you cannot operate in the spirit world because your spirit is dead. So how does... How does God deal with this situation? In Romans chapter 6, verse number 3, the Bible says that we were all baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. In other words, when Jesus came down to this planet earth, he came as a substitute, as a representative of mankind. So we have got on earth two men. One is the first Adam who disobeyed and because of his disobedience, his action, the whole mankind became carnal. They lost their identity of like God, now a new identity like Satan. And because of this fallen nature, Man became a self-centered person, a selfish person and love got replaced with lust. So God who is love 
is all the time longing to love others, always longing to see the benefit of others. That's the original man. Now, because of the fallen nature, the same man is more interested in loving his self and loving his benefits and all his life he is only looking at what can happen good things in my life so he becomes a self conscious self centered person and every sin that we have ever committed is because we have been self centered you cannot commit a sin without being self centered for example satan said if you eat this fruit you shall become like god now was she already like god but did she know her identity no no and that's why she got deceived and the desire came the doubt came that god is good but he has kept this tree away from me because he knows the devil said that the day you eat it you will become like him now did those words create a doubt in eve god is good but he has purposely kept me away from this fruit because might be god is thinking that if i eat it i'll become like him so did that doubt create eve to believe what satan said or what god said Satan. So did she change her thinking? Did that cause her to desire for that fruit, which was forbidden? Yes. Yes. So did she, did she choose to believe Satan, and not to believe God? Yes. So when she chose to believe Satan, did her action correspond to what Satan said or God said? Satan said. So having taken that action, did she go and speak the same? to a husband did he also take the same action yes. yes now when they took that action that action cut them off from god because they believed satan the trial or every day storms that we go through or problems that we go through or the symptoms that we go through the question is who do i choose to believe because whosoever you believe will receive the harvest from whom you believe so when adam and eve believed satan what happened the first thing they surely died they did not die physical but they surely died in spirit because man was a spirit being but now sin caused that spirit to die and his mind got corrupted that man who is a spirit being who would be connected to god the connection with god was destroyed by man's own thinking own doing and now god man got connected to satan and man was the owner or god had given the garden to man so he was in charge of the garden the same man now became slave of satan and he was cast out of the garden so what was his that was gone and man who was supposed to be the boss in the garden now ended up becoming slave of a deceiving master satan so man who is spirit who is connected to god in spirit by which he was supposed to be a supernatural being with supernatural wisdom that same man lost his connection with god because the bible says in one day in one day adam filled with the wisdom of god was able to name all the animals all the birds every creature on earth all the plants he could name them all in one day so what was the wisdom his wisdom was like god and because his wisdom was like god when he opened his mouth and spoke that wisdom of god 
spoke names based on the character of those things and so they were named by Adam's wisdom. Now the moment he disobeyed, the wisdom of God was gone and now the same man who had the wisdom of God now got so corrupted that he began to live his life on intellect and not on spirit level. So to restore everything, God made a system. This is not man-made system. Man-made system is when he saw he was naked, he took fig leaves and covered himself. That is man-made. God's made is because he has already been corrupted, he has lost his innocence, God has to sacrifice a substitute who is innocent because man has become guilty by his action. He has lost his innocence and therefore he could see that he is naked and therefore to cover his guilt God had to kill an innocent animal instead of the guilty and not only kill that innocent animal but take his skin to cover him up of guilt so that man could live. Innocent blood was shed so that man could live. And now instead of sacrificing an animal all the time, God decided to send his son Jesus as a lamb of God to be sacrificed for mankind and the blood in Jesus is incorruptible and therefore his life is everlasting. So to save man, he has to sacrifice God's blood, pure blood, without any corruption and this blood has life forever. And in this sacrifice, the innocent takes the place of the guilt, the guilty and all that guiltiness is transferred on to the innocent and the guilty now receives innocent from the substitute. So there is an exchange takes place. What was in us goes to Jesus and whatever is in Jesus comes to us. And that's exactly what God ordained a system to save mankind. So on the cross, Jesus took our guilt he took our sin, he took the nature to rebel against God, curse, sickness, disease, death, everything he took into him and yet in spite of taking all that, he continued to obey God. So we see two gardens, one is the garden of Eden and one is the garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Eden, Satan has spoken lies and has deceived Adam and Eve that they obeyed Satan and disregarded or did not consider what God said, but they considered the lies of the devil. And because they considered the lies of the devil, the action corresponded what they considered. Are you following? And because of that action, they lost everything. Now here comes Jesus on the scene again in the garden, but this time not the garden of Eden, but the garden of Gethsemane. It is a place where this man is going to be crushed. And this man who is going to be crushed, even though he's innocent, even though he's right, is going to be crushed. It's called even a Gethsemane is also called like a wine press. You put the grapes, crush it get the Jews out. In the same way, in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus is going to be crushed to get every blood of Jesus, of his, out. His life, out. Everything of his being, out. In Gethsemane. And he goes through the battle. And as a human being, the lies of the devil is telling him, why do you need to go to the garden of Gethsemane? Why do you want to go to the cross? You can live forever. You can turn your back. 
and go away and live a victorious life. Now because he is having no sin nature, he is a spirit being who has spiritual understanding of his father's relationship. He is able to look at everything connected to his father in spirit and that's why he does not tolerate anything that is not of the kingdom of God. So here are two kingdoms, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of God, kingdom of God, supernatural, superior, unlimited uh, power and the kingdom of darkness, the most lavish life, miserable life, torturous life, life with all kinds of sickness, disease, death, everything. So Jesus, who is a spirit being, is connected to his father in spirit and does not tolerate any work of the devil. And that's why you find in Jesus' life, he begins to fight everything of the kingdom of darkness because he's on a much, much superior anointing power of God that comes from his father. So a person who is a spirit being is able to connect to God. A person whose spirit is dead can never connect to God because he, his nature is carnal, his attitude is carnal, his desires are carnal and because of which his thoughts and actions are carnal. Now begins the battle that he has to go to the cross. And in this battle, he is God himself and he is man himself. But he has to fight this battle as man. Why does he need to fight this battle as man? Because he has to be a substitute of man. Are you there? Yes. Yeah. He has to be found innocent, sinless. And even when he is falsely accused, he has to take it as a substitute. So have we broken the law? Yes. According to the system, are we criminals? Yes. Is he a criminal? No. no. But is he treated as a criminal? Yes. yes. Do he, does he need to accept it? Only if he accepts it, then only the penalty can be paid. Now, my question is, when you're wrong and somebody accuses you, will you take it patiently? Because you are wrong. You're when you are wrong. wrong. In school you did something wrong. And the teacher says you are the one. So let me punish you. Will you take it patiently? No. sir. If you are wrong. The teacher doesn't punish you. When you were in school my dear. Ray. Ray yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Ray. Yes. When you are in school and you did something wrong. Yeah. The teacher punished you. Yeah. Did you open your mouth or did you say I am sorry? I'm sorry. Now you did not do anything wrong. Yeah. And the teacher illegally or innocently yeah. accused you for something you never did. Ray, will you take it patiently or yeah. you'll open your mouth? I'll open my mouth. And prove to her that her judgment is wrong. Yes. Now what about Jesus? He kept silent. Why did he keep silent? to repay uh, so his his desire is that he has been falsely accused yeah. so that the repayment can be done okay let me give you a more example of it was there a criminal with Jesus yes his name was Barabbas and as per the law Pilate said one of them can be released so I've decided to release Jesus of Nazareth. Right? What did the high priest say? No. Not Jesus of Nazareth. Barabbas. But Barabbas. Did the high priest know that his words were also the part of the game? If he knew it, he wouldn't have said it. Because Jesus is standing there as a lamb of God. He's not guilty but is standing in a place of a 
guilty. Now he is ready to offer his life, his body as a sacrifice for the guilty. Now can the holy God ever accept sacrifice from the hands of the guilty? He will only accept the sacrifice from the hand of the priest. So when he is accused that he is to be crucified on the cross, who started it? The chief priest. The chief priest. Now the moment the chief priest said crucify him, Jesus would have smiled inside and said, thank you very much because now my sacrifice for my people is acceptable to God. Isn't Jesus the high priest of all high priests? So Jesus is the high priest but when he's offering himself, he's not offering himself as a priest, he's offering himself as a sacrifice and he is the sacrificial lamb. There are so many truths hidden and God wants to reveal it to us. Then we will know who we are in Christ. Then we will know what we are and what is our identity that we can exercise the truth. Brother, did you say the high priest was guilty or not guilty? Um, high the high priest said crucify him. So when he said crucify him, now the sacrifice of Jesus, is it acceptable or not acceptable? That's why I'm confused. I'm okay, I'm sorry let's, say, let's say Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. So can he become the high priest? No. His position has changed from high priest to the lamb to be sacrificed. Okay. Now, is this lamb going to be accepted by the father without a priest? So now who is the priest? The high priest. So when he said, did he know that he was actually offering Jesus, the lamb of God, as a sacrifice? No, I, I, I thought there was a scripture where Caiaphas did say, um, okay, it but has to be, uh, I forget the scripture. One man should yeah. die. For to save of the nation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did he ever know that what he was saying was also a part of the game? I don't know. I don't know. But did now when you understand the scriptures, to, see when it is in the present tense you don't know. But now when you look back in the past, you begin to realize God's perfect plan to get his perfect plan executed by which you and I can be saved. And the best part is, people who played the role did not even know that they were in the game. I see. So, he, he so, also, so also in your life, there are many things when you see through the intelligence, you say, everything is going wrong with me. But when you see the same thing through the scriptures, you begin to realize you are a big part in the game. Every one of us. Let me give an example. When I lost everything and I went into depression. It looked like my life is going to get over at 33. The other day I was talking to Brother Amal and I said, the devil had cornered me so much that I could see there's no chance for me to escape. Sickness, demonic, financial, marriage, relationship, sin, the whole package, no chance. And the devil had taken me to the corner and he said, nothing can change, nothing can help you. Nothing can be coming good in your life. The best thing is go and end up your life. So in those days I would get suicidal thoughts because all that I could see with my intelligence is that my life has been only a curse to so many people whom I caused torture and pain. Are you understanding me? So I never came to church. I was brought to church. And when I was brought to church, for the first time in my life, I cried out to God and said, give me one chance. I don't want to die at 33. In my life, I had never had tears. No matter how much the pain, I will never cry. I'll give you an example. If this finger went into the door and got jammed, <coughs> I would knock at the door and tell my dad, please open the door, my finger is jammed. I had pus in my heel. 
and when I would be at home, I would walk straight so that nobody realizes. But my dad saw my leg and said, come here, let me see. And he saw my leg is swollen with pus. So he told my mother, go and take him to the doctor. It was late night. So we went and the clinic was closed. So I came home and asked my dad, what will the doctor do? He said, he'll take a blade, cut it and take out the pus and then he'll stitch you. I said, that's all? By I'm at that time, I think 12 years old. So I said, by stitching, will this get healed? He said, yes. So by the time they got up in the morning, I did my surgery on my own leg and stitched it up. <laughs> Are you following mm -hmm. from what? Yeah. From where I come? Yeah, doing things for yourself. <laughs> and and so, I have no fear. Right. Okay. Even when my mom died, everybody were crying. And I was saying, why do you need to cry? She died, she died. I never had tears. I never knew compassion. I enjoyed blood. I enjoyed street fighting. Right from my nine year old till my 10th standard, every day I would be watching bloody wrestling. Are you understanding my background? Mm -hmm. So I came from extreme negativity where I've tortured and destroyed things. Now, let's say we are in a community. There's peace. So what will I do? I'll pick up a stone and break somebody's window glass. Yeah. For no reason. Yeah. I want something to happen. I don't like peace. Are you fine? Understand? Yeah. So I wanted to fly kite. And the secretary would not open the terrace door. So I went back home, picked up the tools and broke the door. And I said, now you don't have a door. I wanted to play badminton and that fellow would stop me. So I said, right before your eyes, you got a brand new car. I'm going to come and bash it up and I'm going to remove the brake pipe. So it will show brake fail. Are you understanding? Yeah. All the time, nasty thoughts with nasty action. Now, do you understand whom we are dealing with? <laughs> you might frighten people away. <laughs> Sorry? I said you better be careful, you frighten people away. Yes, I was, I was a person who would break peace. And, my, and I would also think, you know, after I got healed, I would think, my brother is not like that. My sister is not like that. My dad is a peaceful man. Mom is an extremely loving woman. How come I am like this? And I would sometimes even think, might be when I was born in the hospital, I got exchanged. <laughs> because nobody has got this. So I was brought to church. And at 33, I can see death knocking at the door. Fear, extreme fear. And the same person who would be fearless is now having fear even to lock the door, bathroom door and my wife has to stand in front. So I was demonized. I had symptoms. I had everything. And for the first time I said, God, give me one chance. I don't want to die. I'm a Catholic all my life, but I had nothing to do with church. Nothing to do with Jesus. Now for the first time I said, give me one chance. And when I said, give me one chance, I did not even know my name at that time. And the priest was preaching. For the first time, I began to pay attention to what he's saying. And something began to happen. That word that I began to hear, surely the Spirit of God gave me the power to believe what was being spoken. And on the fifth day, hearing the word for three hours, on the fifth day, I accepted Christ. And from the fifth day, I had a symptom. My head would go like this the whole day. It just stopped. I could recognize my wife, my children. I came to know my own name. And then I realized that this Bible 
is not a story book but this bible is a power of god that all i need to do is hear attentively and my journey began and i said god give me one chance and teach me how does how does this system work i promise you day and night i will serve you and i promise you i will serve you freely i will never charge you any amount for the service that i put in because you healed me free you set me free free you delivered me from the demons free and above all you gave me heaven as my eternal home free adopted me free so it's been now 25 years i serve night and day free praise god now who changed me i changed me no god changed oh god changed me so how did i come to know that god changed me you read that again 2 corinthians 5 17 please so if any one is in christ there is a new creation everything old has passed away see everything has become new so i realized if i am in christ jesus then my old nature sinful nature selfish nature self consciousness has been put to death and instead of that i've got a new nature and that new nature is of god himself and this has been done not by my effort but it has been done by god because of love to the holy spirit did it happen quickly it happens instantly it happens instantly you're speaking for everybody exactly. like yeah everybody that's why see what is it say read that again so so if anyone if there's a condition if anyone it can it be anybody all of us yes, yes. if anyone is in christ has accepted what jesus has done for him the gospel if he believes in that gospel then then there is a new creation did he say there is a new creation or there is going or there is becoming a new creation is there is so is this complete or a process complete give me some other translation whatever you have let us see that so that you are no longer doubting read and please be free to ask questions yeah uh, i i, I we will we'll study this part first okay. and then you can ask questions yeah next translation please yeah read it therefore therefore if any man now when he says therefore can we read a scripture before that yeah okay read that wherefore henceforth no we no man after the flesh so saint paul is saying from the day i met this christ i do not know any person in the flesh means i do not know christ in flesh and blood then then so we have known christ after the flesh so the apostles knew jesus in flesh and blood apostles yes. peter james john yes. they lived with jesus yes. come on ray talk to me yes. I, I, i'm asking you question don't look confused <laughs> now was peter called by jesus yes was jesus in flesh and blood yeah. yes so did peter know jesus in the body yes did paul know jesus in the body no no there's a difference now read it again the whole sentence wherefore wherefore henceforth henceforth no we no man no we no, no man. man no man then after the flesh after the flesh in body and blood then before he before he goes on can we just clarify what it cuz it is archaic language so it's confusing um so okay put the put the other translation from now on from now on now or tomorrow from now on now on is it now okay yeah. from now on 
from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. So we regard no one? No one. From the human point of view. Human point of view is what? Things Current. seen or things not seen? Current. Things seen. So from carnal side, we don't know anybody. Okay, then? Even though we once knew Christ. From Even though we once knew Christ, that is, Peter and James and John could have said, we knew Christ because we stayed with him. But Paul is saying, I have never seen him. I have never met him. I do not know him in flesh and blood. Read that again, please, the whole sentence. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So how many times are you thinking or you have thought, if only I was during the time of Peter, James and John and would have actually seen Jesus and touched Jesus and gone with him on a mission, my faith would have been... Right. Ray, did you think that? I didn't. Well, no, no. But I see what you're saying. I see. But but but. But Paul is on. saying. Paul is saying. Don't need it. You don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah. I'm not seeing him, but I see him through the scriptures. That's it. That, if I may, um, because there is a way that you explain it excellently, brother. About um, you know, you there's always water in the tap, but until you turn the tap on, yeah. the water doesn't flow. And it's, it's the same with us. If we, uh, this is truth, but if we don't live it, and if we don't accept it, and if we don't believe it, then it, it can't work in our lives. Yeah. So when I believe, I turn the tap anti clockwise, and the water flows. And if I'm trying to believe the scriptures with my carnal thinking, I don't have physical evidence, and I end up with unbelief. Now, therefore, Paul is saying, I've never seen Christ, but I know him through the scriptures. Therefore, if any man is willing to believe Jesus through the scriptures, he is a new creation. He did not say he is becoming a new creation. Yes. Okay? yes, 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 please. Yeah. I don't mind going three hours with this, but we will learn better. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, on, on Saturday night, mm. at your talk, I, I understood, may, maybe it was from a brother, um, your, um, um, or yourself, I'm not sure, but one, one of you said uh, to me that it won't happen, it won't happen overnight, that uh, okay. I grow stronger in it. Okay. And okay. that's why I asked. Did okay. It okay. 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 Yeah. Now, I want you to understand a pig goes to the dirt because of his nature. 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 Yes. Okay. In the same way, man's nature is created in the likeness and image of God. Yes. But the same man, after disobedience, has no more the nature of God, but he has the nature of passion like animal. Now, here he's saying, anyone who believes in Christ, he's a new creation, means he has been recreated, regenerated with the new nature of God through Christ. Now, how did this happen? Good question. Ray? God, God, God made it happen. Yes, but how does it get transferred into you? I believe with Bible now, faith. Now, we have got scriptures for that. We got scriptures for that. Okay? Now, let's see the scriptures. How does a man who has got a passion with sinful life, how can he change from a sinful life to a godly life? I Unless the nature doesn't change, I can do it with my willpower and end up with the same addiction and the same passion for my lifetime. So let's go to Romans chapter 8, 10 verse 8. But what does it say? 
The word is near you. Pause. The word is near you. Now, can there be a change in somebody's life without the gospel? Okay, give me Romans 1, verse number 18. For I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. So what's the gospel? The good news. The gospel is the good news of what God has done for mankind, which he can receive not by performance, but only by believing in the performance of Christ. Again, 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 the gospel is the good news that any person can receive by believing, not by performance, and believing what? The performance of Christ and not his own performance. It's the gospel. That means whatever God is demanding you to do, he himself has done it for you. And now your journey is to believe in what he has done for you. And the question then is, uh, that's why my question about, is it a process? You said earlier. I, 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 I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Okay. Can you read this first? Yes. Uh, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. Of God. So now whatever you are hearing, is it the power of God? Yes. Yes, according to the scripture. Yes. See, whatever you answer me, please look at the scripture and answer me. Sure. I will never ask you a question without the answer on the screen. Okay. Now, is it the power of God? Yes. Yes. Then, what is it written after that? Uh, for salvation. Power of God for what? For salvation to everyone. Oh, no, no, don't go so fast. For salvation. What is salvation? Freedom from sin. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from disease. Freedom from demons. Freedom from every work of of the kingdom of darkness. So the gospel is the power of God. For salvation. Means it is the power of God. To restore you back. Before the fall. Yeah. Hello. Hallelujah. It's not just healing. It is. Restoration. Or recovery. Or recreation. Of all that corruption that came because of Adam's disobedience. That's what the gospel does. Read that again, please. From the start? Yes, always from the start. Uh, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Slowly. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Then? It is the power of God for salvation to everyone. To? Everyone. Every, to? Everyone. Everyone, condition. So, is the gospel having the power of God? Yes. yes. But can it manifest in anybody's life? No. For it to manifest in somebody's life, that person has to believe. And what does he need to believe? Six comes before or ten comes before? Six is important. Come on, yeah, digits there. Yeah. Now you don't use your intelligence so much. A simple question. Six comes first or ten comes first? Six. Six. Yes. Good. So let's go to the sixth chapter and then we'll go to the tenth chapter. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Give me Romans chapter six, verse three. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Now Ray, are you a baptized Catholic? Yes. Did you know that when Jesus died, you died with him? I didn't. So if you don't know, how will you know the gospel? But at least now, are you willing to know? Yes. Are you willing to believe? Yes. The scripture says that. Yes. So did you die? Yes. In Christ? Yes. So when you are in union with Christ in baptism, Whatever Adam did in the Garden of Eden, were you inside Adam? 
Sorry? Were we with Adam in the garden? Were you inside of Adam and Eve? Okay. Are you married? No. Okay. Did you come from your father and mother? Yes. So were you inside them? Yes. Good. Yeah. So whatever was there, did it come to the child? Yes. 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 So was the whole human race inside of Adam? Yes. Yes. I love you. Please come for every meeting. Because when you are asking questions, we are understanding better. Thank you. Thank you. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Please. Please be free. Okay. Now Adam disobeyed. Did corruption come into Adam? Yes. Yes. Now did it come to the child? Yes. Now did it come to the generation? Yes. Are you sure now? One got COVID, he went and touched the other, and he got COVID. Yeah. We can understand that. Yeah. So can you understand this? Yeah. Yes. Is the scripture saying that? Yes. Yes. Now, when we were baptized in Christ, and Christ died, was it necessary for us to die? Yes. Yes. The problem is with sin, or the person who carries that sin. Now, there is one man who had COVID. Hello. When he was not arrested or quarantined, he was the cause of spreading this COVID to the whole world. So, is COVID dangerous only, or the person carrying it also is more dangerous? The disease. Are, are you are you understanding? Yeah. So Adam was infected with sin, but because of Adam. It got infected to the whole human race. Correct? So sin, sin is the problem, not Adam. Is that what you're, you're no, saying? No, sin is the problem and Adam is the bigger problem. <laughs> because if Adam is sin, has got infection, and he stays in isolation, nobody's going to get it. Yes, so, so whatever is creating now from Adam and Eve are all getting the infection called sin. Yeah, but it was part of God's plan that he procreated, even though he had sin. Sorry? It was God intended the Adam to still go on and have babies. Yes, but because of sin, nature, it has come on every baby. So now God has to deal with not only sin, but the multiplication of sin that comes through people. See, if he forgives you of sin, but you still got that infection in you, will you go and put more spread around? Yeah. So you have to be changed. Mm -hmm. Not only sin has to be destroyed, but the sin nature also has to be destroyed. So God has a complicated situation. He has to deal with man who has got a sin nature. He has to destroy that sin nature and replace him with God nature. How is he going to do that? He's going to teach us practically how it happened and that's the gospel see before the gospel could come before jesus could come god is demanding under a covenant of law of moses that i want you to do this and this and this and if you are willing to do it then i promise you all this goodness will come all this blessing will come that is the law of moses based on your performance god will perform but God already knows that man who is imperfect, he cannot perform perfectly. Again, again. Man is imperfect, but the demand is to perform perfectly. And man being imperfect, he can never perform perfectly. So why did God give the law? He gave the law to make man understand that no matter how much he tries his best, he can never ever reach God's standard. He will surely fail. So, man in this miserable condition needs a savior. The biggest problem with all people is, we believe that I can handle my life. I don't need anybody to interfere in my life. But actually speaking, man is imperfect. He cannot perform perfectly. That's why he needs a savior who is perfect in all his ways and get united with him so that he in you will help you to live a life from imperfection to 
perfection. Are you understanding slowly, slowly? You can't understand in one yes. shot. You'll have to go again and again and again and listen to it oh, over and so, over. So you did say this on Saturday, um, uh, that you can't understand in one shot. It takes time. And I, I, the reason I got confused was because when you said earlier that it's not, not a process, it's now. There are two things. One is a process and one is instant. That's what I'm trying to under, make you understand. Okay? So, according to the scripture, did you die? Yes. So, are you going to now spread around? You are dead. Then, was Jesus buried? Yes. 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 Were you buried with him? Yes. So, you died, you were buried. That means surely, 100% guarantee, Jesus died. Three days. Now, on the third day, did God raise him up from the dead? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when God raised Jesus from the dead, were you in Jesus? Yes. So did you get raised up with him? Yes. Now when you are raised up, are you having the same old nature or... The old corrupted nature died with Christ. The old nature died with Christ. So now you have a new nature in Christ. And that's why you are a new regenerated creation. You are not becoming new. You are already new in your spirit. But, but you are not living your life with a new nature. I got it. My, my, because my ah, your mind has the knowledge of the old nature which you learned in the world. Yeah. So now for a Christian, his whole life is to learn to love, uh, to learn to live under new nature, and he can learn the new nature because now he is a spirit being who understands spiritual things which was not possible for him to understand. Because his nature was the low, corrupted nature of man. Are you yeah. understanding up to here? And his mind has to catch up then. Is it, yeah. Is I, I'm getting the process and the, the two different things. Two different, different things. So one thing. Is instant. One thing, remember, one thing. In baptism, God has finished with all of us and given every person who believes in Jesus in his death, burial and resurrection with you, along with him, God has raised everyone and given every one of us the new birth. And that's instant. That's instant. Yeah. Design now, the God. question is, do you know? So if you don't know, for example, I wanted to come here. I don't know the address. Will I ever reach here? No. no. So my action will always be based on what I know. So for me to know the kingdom of God or the spiritual things, I cannot know with my senses. I can know only with the road map called the Bible. Example, let me give an example. There is the modem. It has got a name. Really, it has got a name. So when you go on the mobile, you check that name. And it has also got a password. So you put the password. If the password is correct, then you get connected to the modem and now you have the power to download, upload, correct? Hello, correct? Yes. In the same way, now the new SIM has been entered inside of you, which can get connected to God. When you were born from your mother's womb, you did not have the SIM to connect to God because your SIM was cor corrupted. If I don't see a smile on your face, I know you are confused. But, but, but listen, I don't want you to say yes and yes and yes. If you are confused, say it. I don't understand. Teach me again. In this three hours. I, I was thinking you mentioned uh, uh, um, when we were born from our mother's be, 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 Because I, I want to say to you, the moment you understand this truth, in no time you will be able to perform supernaturally here yeah. before we close down. Come, 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 come. Okay, but what stops So me? for me it is, if you understand this truth, you'll walk out of this place, a different person, new creation. All you need now is to use your new spirit that God has given you.
he understand the tripart being? I'm just wondering if you went into the body, soul, spirit, would he understand it better? He would understand, but I, you know, in that body, soul, and spirit, I know that my spirit is connected with the Holy Spirit. But do I know that I've been restored back to the original? You are restored back to the same like Jesus. I just gave him a, an answer and I said, because you are a spirit being, you're not a spiritual being. You're a spirit being and a spirit being is able to connect to the spirit of God. For example, this one is giving me Wi-Fi signal. Can I see it? No. Can I feel it? No. Can I feel the power? But do I need a mobile to connect with it? Yes. Do I need a computer to connect with it? Yes. Or can I connect it with my body? Are you understanding the system? Yes. So when my spirit became new, I got a new SIM that connects me to God, which I have not shared before. I am also learning. So once I know, I have a spirit connection to spirit. Now, a spirit man and a spiritual man, there's a big difference. Example, was Peter a fisherman? Yes. Was he a spirit man before Jesus' is death? That's why he was able to deny Jesus three times. Now the same Peter, he received the spirit of God and he got born again on the day of Pentecost. Now is the same Peter filled with fear? Is he scared of death? Oh, he has got no fear of death. No fear of it. Now is he connected to God? So now when he's connected to God and he sees a crippled man, is he wondering how am I going to heal the crippled man? Or he's saying, because now I'm a spirit man, I do not tolerate the nonsense of the devil, the sickness and disease. I have the authority in Christ to open my mouth and speak those faithful words and the Spirit of God will do the job for me. So if you know who you are, will you tolerate the nonsense of the devil? No, but I mean, the, who, who Peter speaks to has to have faith, doesn't he? Because he's a spirit man, he understands spiritual things. Now, I'll give an example. Does the Pharisees know the scriptures? Does Peter know the scripture more of the Pharisees? Pharisees? Then how come Peter can raise the dead and the Pharisees could not heal the addict? He's a spirit, He's a spirit man. He's a spirit man, whereas those are spiritual man, not yet born again. Mm -hmm. So first thing I must understand that I'm a spirit man, not a spiritual man. And because I'm a spirit man, God, a spirit man worships God in spirit and in truth. A spiritual man worships God not in spirit because he doesn't have the spirit to worship. So he's worshiping God with his intelligence. So do we really believe that because we are new creation already done, we have got a new sim that is the very nature of God. God has changed us into a spirit man. So because you're a spirit man, now do you know what can a spirit man do? Unless you know, you won't go for it. Unless you know to drive, you won't go and sit behind the steering wheel. When you know to drive, are you worried to drive? So all our life is all about what? Knowing in Christ who we are and what is the authority and the anointing that we carry to destroy the kingdom of darkness. I'll give you an example. I got a chance to go to the tribal area. And I took a few of the people who, who came to know Christ about a year back or one and a half year back. And most of them were Hindus. And I take them to the village. And now they know the scriptures and they preach on Zoom. So when you're preaching on the internet, it's one way, right? Now when we go to the village, 
they have an opportunity to preach to those people what they have learned. Now as they begin to preach and they open their mouth and they speak words, instantly they see so many signs, wonders and healings taking place instantly. Is that going to grow their faith? Hello? Yes. yes. Is that going to grow their relationship with God? Yes. yes. Is that going to grow their confidence and boldness in God? So as they do, now when they go, now for example, they left on April the 11th and they will be going back from the mission on the 12th of July. So is there a holiday? No. Are they visiting village after village? Yes. Are they practicing what they have learned and who they are? Yes. Now the question is, from the 11th of April to the 12th of July, have they become a blessing to those who receive the gospel? Yeah. Yes. Do you think their own life will remain the same? So they are saying, when I say thank you for going to those villages, they are saying you don't understand. It's not that we teach them, but we ourselves are taught by the Spirit of God those things which we never knew. They are going to so much interior jungle where there is no bathroom, there is no toilet, they go in nature. Now these girls have grown up in the city. Is it possible for them to go to the river and have bath in a public place? Will shame talk to them? Yes. Will that give them, uh, what do you say, irritating? Frustrated. Or will they be in peace to go and have bath in the river? In the, con in the country or in the city? So, so now these people, when they go there and they find no toilet, no this thing and that thing, now they are confused. Should we stay here or should we run for our life? <laughs> now, they went and had bath with other ladies of the village in that river. Now when they see them having bath, did they imitate them? Yeah. Yes. How long was the problem for them? 15 minutes to get the job done. But after that 23 hours, 45 minutes, what did they do? Enjoyed the gospel, in preaching the gospel and setting the captives free. Now when they did it for 3-4 days, they called me and they were crying on the phone and they said these words. Next time you want to send us, send us to these places because for 15 minutes we suffered. But the next 23 hours, we are enjoying Christ in action with us. The first time they came, they did not know what was waiting for them. But now, as they began to live, it was now natural for them, normal for them, that this situation is nothing. I can face it, but after this situation, I can enjoy my life with Christ in action, touching people and changing lives. Now, were they Hindus? Yes. Today, in the morning, one of the girls got baptized after preaching for six months in villages with signs and wonders. She is baptized now. Today. She was preaching with no Holy Spirit or not? She is preaching with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not the water baptism. Isn't it strange? Yes. She has been teaching for six months. She has been teaching the word and people's lives have been changed. Today, she got baptized in the water, praise God, but all this time she was baptized in tongues. Now, in Cornelius' house, when Peter went, did he water baptize them first or did they get baptism of the Holy Ghost? Now, did she give her life to Jesus? Yes. When she gave that life to Jesus, did she become a new creation? Yes. Was it instant? Yes. Yes. Now, what was her journey? To understand spiritual things using the word of God because now she is a spirit being who understand spiritual things. The decision is instant. Like your surrender. To instant. You see again that Romans 1 16 what does it say? I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to believe what Jesus did for me on the cross that he was buried and he rose from the dead. I'm not ashamed of that. In fact, I cherish that. And he did this 
only for me to save me from sin nature to god nature and that's why i know with my experience from the day i believed in christ praise god it is the power of god for salvation now was saul who became paul a pharisee was he a champion in the scriptures was he the pharisee of the pharisees then how come this pharisee could not heal people before was saul who became paul a champion in the scriptures yes and as who came to meet him was he a champion in the scriptures no he was not even a pharisee and when he came was saul a blind man yes now did he say receive your sight brother in the name of jesus and as he went and said yes and did saul receive sight now who received sight saul received sight or ananias received sight saul received sight but ananias both, received both, both received because ananias said to jesus to the holy spirit i'm not going there he's going to kill me he's a killer he's a murderer and every christian is killing what did the holy spirit say you go there and talk to him about the gospel now did ananias believe and go yes when he went there was saul the same person no he had encountered jesus on the way to damascus now when anas preached to him the gospel was saul ready to receive yes yeah. was he baptized yeah. yes did the scales fall off his eyes yeah. now was saul preaching about christ or was he still a pharisee the moment he got born again preaching about christ so now did he have the scriptures yeah yeah now with the new nature with the new spirit could saul understand now that all those scriptures that are written it is all pointing to christ yes did he know before no why not in the spiritual now you are understanding Now just as Saul received the born again experience being baptized with the holy ghost are you also baptized in the holy ghost yes yes but do you have scriptures to make you understand spiritual things like Saul they are available no but they are available they are available but do you know them no so can you tap your spirit to something you don't know but available no So when you go for an exam, you take a textbook. The answers are available, but what do you write? What is available? <laughs> are you understanding, Ray? Yes. Is it about available or is it about what you know? So is a Christian journey now to know the truths and apply them with your new nature, a spirit man. Now, will you get results? So has God given to everybody the spirit? Your spirit is new. So is your spirit thirsting for spiritual food? Yes. And those who understand, now there was a time when half an hour prayer would give you sleep. Now you want to sit and listen for hours and hours, and everybody is tired, and you say, "No, I want more." Why? because your spirit is saying i want more so that i understand the truth and live a life supernatural manifestation in my life so the day you understand that you are a new creature with a new spirit the same spirit like that of christ all you need to do is change your thinking your knowledge and that same spirit will now teach you to live a supernatural life that is why the fishermen could do amazing things which the spiritual man could not do because his spirit is dead that is why when nicodemus came to jesus at night he said i can see you doing great miracles and these miracles are not possible to human being how do you do that 
And Jesus gave an answer and said, unless you're born again, you can not enter the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus asked him, you mean to say I should go back to my mother's womb? He said, no, you got to be born of God. Hello. Yeah. Is, is now the picture opening? Yeah. Now that you are a spirit man, Ray, are you offended because I take his name? Is it okay? Or you might be saying he's not taking my name. Ray, are you feeling depressed because I'm calling out your name again and again? Now and again. Huh? <laughs> what did he say? Now and again. Now, if you're a spirit being, will you get offended? No. Because you're already dead to yourself. So now can I call you again and again? I, I, I correct what I say. I, I'm not, I'm not afraid. That's how. That's how the gospel is all about. The gospel is all about hearing the gospel and making a quick correction. And the moment, the moment you made the quick correction, you change your thinking. That's called as repentance. And now, when your thinking agrees to the word of God, you will always see supernatural things happen. So let let me give an example. A person is a Hindu or a person is a born Catholic but still operating in spirit, uh, in carnal things. Okay. Now let's see how do I get him out to become a spirit being. Read that Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Is it interesting? Yeah. Hello. Yes. Ray, you are not talking anything to me. <laughs> Ray, I'm there up till the first of June. Okay. Yeah. If you can come every day and whatever you hear now, go home and do it. Before the first I leave, you'll say, Brother, what I've not seen in my lifetime, I'm seeing things happening now supernaturally because you understand you are a spirit being and being a spirit being, you are authorized to use the authority that comes from Christ with the wisdom of Christ. So you do not tolerate anything that comes from the kingdom of darkness because you are far superior than the symptoms that you see. Unless you know it, you won't use it. When you say the greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world, what does that mean? It means uh, Christ is greater than, than the kingdom of darkness. Not only Christ is greater, Christ in you has made you like him to use his power, his authority like him and tolerate no nonsense coming from the devil. So Romans 10 verse 8. I'll give you a pause for you to think and ask me some questions, okay? Let's go there. Are you are you annoyed with me? Ray? No, no. Do you uh, do you still love me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And do you know how many people who are watching now are saying thank you, Ray, for coming and not allowing him to go like a train, but keep him engaged on that platform because I want to know this so that when I come back after a week practicing this, I don't come alone. I come with the head of Goliath. Because now you know the operating system. Yeah, Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But, but what does it say? But what does it say? The word is near you. On the word is? Near you. Near you. On your lips and in your heart. So where is the word of faith? Okay, in, near you, on your lips and in your heart. Then? That is the word of faith that we proclaim. So am I proclaiming? Am I proclaiming the gospel? Yes. Are you receiving? Yes. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. it's a journey. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. But are you receiving something? Yes. 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 Where is that word now? In my heart. Before it's in your heart, where is it? Read, read over there. Uh, on, on, on my lips and in my heart. So which one comes heart? first? Uh, in the, well, in, in the sentence, yeah, on your lips, on your lips. So what do you mean on this sentence? It's the word of God. No, it's not just a sentence. What You're I not mean? reading a newspaper, brother. Yeah. You are reading the words of God. What so I what mean? did he say comes first? What I mean is I wouldn't speak it 
unless it was in my heart. I sometimes I won't say it if I don't believe it. That's okay. I mean. yeah. So that means you cannot receive the gospel at all. <laughs> You're going to have to change that, sorry. <laughs> you got to change the system, brother. <laughs> because what? Because to believe in your heart, you have to first speak. Okay. Even though you don't believe. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not troubling me. The cop just walked in. <laughs> the way he walked in, I said... Uh, uh, but brother, you <laughs> speak it to yourself. Like You must learn the word before it can even go on your lips. And then you must... When it goes on your lips. Let's see, let's study it very simple. Chris, very, very simple. He said, in your mouth. So if it's in your mouth, now, did God speak the word? Yes. Did Jesus speak the word? Did apostles speak the word? Did the early church speak the word? So if everybody spoke the word, then I should I imitate God? Jesus, apostles, prophets, do I need to speak the word? Yes. Yes. But you'd have to know it first. No, see, see, when, no, no, when you heard the word okay. yeah. and you spoke the word, there won't be belief. But at least you got the word. Yeah. Chris, do they do farming in yes. Ireland? Yes. I just saw a big portion of land with a white plastic on it. What does that mean? They are growing maize. I don't know what they are growing, but they are do they they are growing something. Yeah. Is it on? It's on. It's on. You want it's to damp. increase the light? It's dark. Well, I've done it light. Okay. Now, now, what is the problem with my brother? I don't he's, know. He is he, searching for that. It's not here for the light. It's here. It's here. Six. 10, 14, oh, good, 20. Good, good, good. 40. Yeah. So now, now where was the problem? Lips and heart. He didn't know. Which comes first. No, he did not have the knowledge because it was not happened. <laughs> now, where was he looking for? All around. No, he was looking at this. But the pride is here. In the same way, when I am a carnal person, I'm looking at my senses to solve my problem. But the moment I become a spirit being, I learn the system and I operate by that system. Are you following? And to operate in the system of God, the first thing he said, use your mouth to speak God's word. And the more and more you use that mouth of yours to speak God's word, you will learn Faith, you learn believing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the carnal mind, carnal man. But brother, brother, hearing, you just said uh, faith comes by hearing. Um, it just came to my mind that hearing is more than just, is more than the sound. It needs to um, um, come into your heart. Uh, Understanding, it involves understanding. Have you been, have you ever heard of any person in the army? You have got any friends in the army? Um, no, but I, 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 can, I can understand the, the okay. energy, yeah. Okay. In the Indian army, I tell you, yeah. there's a battalion where there's one officer and a number of soldiers under him. Okay, every day they speak a particular slogan. For, a, for example, if I live or die, I will go forward and host my flag in the enemy's ground, no matter what. Okay. Now they are repeating it over and over again. Now what is happening? They're starting to believe. Okay, let me give another example. The doctor said to a healthy man, the report was an error by the blood test people, but nobody knew it. But he said, You got blood cancer. Now, the healthy man will repeat that word over and over in his mind 
even though he has no, got no blood cancer. What will be his condition after one week? He might get cancer. If he gets or not, but he will be extremely weak. Words have power. So when the word is near you, which word is near you? God's word or any word? God's word. So when that God's word is near you and you are repeating that God's word again and again, your real external ears are hearing and they produce a substance called faith. For example, I asked Chris, my brother, I just saw on the land, on the field, white plastic laid there. And you said they are growing maize. How are you so sure? You went and saw? Because you know the system. Correct? Now when they are covered it with plastic, how will that seed sprout and come out of the plastic? Perfect. Sorry? So, even though it is covered, will it sprout and come out of that hole? Yeah. How will it search for that hole? Because of the light, praise God. Will it tear through that plastic and come out? The hole will be there. Yeah, so will it come out? Yeah. Will it start spreading? It always does. Will it destroy that plastic and grow? Yes. In the same way, the gospel word, when you speak it out, it will sprout, it will grow through all external things. It will keep on growing because the power in that seed has the potential to tear through all that and still produce the harvest. So the point is basically we should be going around with a Bible in our hands all the time. And no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, Chris, you can get a few seeds and water them again and again and again. Okay. So how do you water them? Speak it out of your mouth. Let your ears hear it. It produces the faith and then enters the heart. Ray, yes. you look to be very serious now. Will you be going home? Uh, or will you be going with confusion? I don't know. So do you want to ask some more questions to clarify? Uh, not now. Not now. Tomorrow? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Praise God. So the system teaches me, <coughs> the word is near me, two places, in my mouth and in my heart, not in my mind. So what's the difference between mind and heart? Your mind uses your intellect to kind of analyze it. Do you believe in your mind? No. Or do you believe in your heart? In your heart. So how do you know? Because your mind is carnal. Uh, so you are believing in your heart. How do you know? You accept it. And just... How do you know what? You Whether you believing from your mind or heart. Mind is believing is from sense knowledge. So Don't give them the answer. <laughs> I'll put you out of the class. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. so, mind is fast to experience already. In life. One of the classic parable that can make everybody understand. Are you believing from the mind or heart? I have got 10 euros. Oh, I've heard that parable. You hear it again. I've got 10 euros. I spent 7 euros on a poor man. How many will I have? Answer is 3. What you learned in school. So are you thinking the knowledge that you learned in school based on your senses? Yes. yes. So are you believing in your mind? Yes. Yes. Right? Now the same thing, a person believing in the heart. And I ask him, you spent seven euros on a poor man. What does he say? Three or seven hundred? 
No, you can talk, brother. I am so sorry. No, no, no. You look to be so serious. After that. No, no. Okay. So, when you say 700, what happens to others? They say, is he foolish? He has not gone to school. How can it be 700? So he explains to you and says, Luke 6, 38 says, when I give, Jesus says, when you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Now, did that man who gave the answer, who gave the answer, believe in the heart? In the heart. No. You can give me all the right scripture answers, but that doesn't prove that you believe in the heart. So what's the proof? Sharon, what's the proof? <laughs> Whether you're believing in your heart or mind. Your answer is right, 700. But still giving me the answer, will I believe you believe in your heart? Because you're at peace? Hmm? Because you will be at peace? At peace? Come on, somebody answer me. Sharon, come on. When you leave, you when you leave. Now, when I believe... Sorry, what did she say? When you leave the room, you continue to practice. Exactly. When I go out of this door, I practiced in giving or receiving. Giving. Okay. So a person who believes in his heart, by your actions, it, his action will be giving. not based on world knowledge, sense knowledge, but God's knowledge. So how many people do you see believing in the heart who come for Bible study? I'm not pointing finger to anybody. I'm just asking. Is your answer right? Oral exam right? All exam right? Practical application right? So is Christian life a life of luck or a life of skill, confidence in believing? What happened to you? You're not even giving me a smile. Are you confused? Um, I'm just listening. Just listening. But he's always new around here. Yeah, brother, and, if, and this is like a very advanced class. He's I'm, only a baby. I'm to be here because it's... See, so see, it's an advanced class, but I want to tell you, without this class, a person cannot understand the Bible. His life will still be miserable. Yes, now, now tell me, how many years am I going to spend in teaching A for Apple? <laughs> how long must you suffer? <laughs> That's what Jesus said. How long should I be with you? Can't you eat the basics and get on with the hard food so that you are casting out demons, you are healing the sick, you are walking in victory, no longer a life of a victim. So is this how you hope for the whole of the session in Ireland this year to kind of go to that you'll be kind of teaching the advanced kind of classes? I also teach the basics, brother, and I also teach. Yes. But it's all depending on where the Holy Spirit is leading me. See, if I come here and I teach and I go, and when I go back, I find nobody taking the position to go and teach. Do you know what happens? Everything is lost. I remember this brother calling me when I was in Abu Dhabi. He called me and he said, my father came on holidays and he started a small Bible class and you know what? The seeds have sprouted and they are grown and they just come out of the soil. And before this he must have called me six, seven times. Can you come to Ireland? I said no. I'm not going to any European country because I don't want to go there. And the reason is I had gone to France and I had gone to Sweden. Sweden. And both the places when I looked at the expenses that were born to preach, based on those expenses, what I saw were 15, 18 people who came. If I have to spend the same money to go to other countries, I would get Hundreds. huge number. And when I convert my currency with your currency, it's a big amount that I have to spend. 
But that sounds like very much like the sense. You're, you're, you're relying on what you see and not what if, you think. Hold on, hold on. Use, use your own parable, bro. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm also learning. Please understand. This was how many years back? 2015. 2015. I'm also upgrading myself. And this when I was somewhere in 2008. And when I saw the figure and what I got was a total mismatch. I got limited resources. And in that limited resources, I have to get maximum productivity. Now, even though he told me so many times, I said, I'm not coming. I needed an inner healing to come out of that shock. Are you following? Then he said to me, my father has come and the seeds have sprouted. I'm looking for a gardener who can water these plants. The moment he said that, I started crying. And I said, God, please forgive me. Now, I'm willing to go there to water those plants of 20 people. How many? Your daddy had started? Yeah, 15 to 20. 20 people. I said, God, I'm ready to go for those 20 and I'm ready to water. Now when I came here, he started telling me, when are you coming back? I said, hold on, hold on. My job was to water. Now, even if I water and I come after six months, those six months, those plants will not survive. It's time for you now to step out and keep watering what you have learned. Thank God, he heard it, he began to believe it, and he started watering. If he had not watered, do you think any of you would have been sitting here? So it is a system that all of us who are born again are called to live a supernatural life. And unless you believe it, you will not live it. Because when I told him, he said, me? You mean to say me? I said, yes, you. Because even I did not know. But now I begin to know. Are you with me? So the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. So what's your challenge every day? To practice, to believe things not seen because your new spirit that God has given you, you are a spirit being. A spirit being can understand spiritual things because he has direct connection with God. But we are so used to living a life the most lost life, the sense knowledge life, or the world knowledge life, that we say, this is not for me, this is for the priest, this is for the religious, this is for the preacher, this is for the prophet, but not me. Biggest lie on earth. Everyone who is born again, God has given that person a new spirit, made him a new creation, where his old stuff is nailed on the cross and everything in him has been made new. And if you are saying this is a tough teaching, my friend, this is the beginning of a Christian life. Look at the next line. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we, which we preach. Now, how does a person from a carnal thinking turn into a spirit man Thinking. The answer is given in verse number 9. What does he say? If you. If you. So what's the system? Confess with your lips. Now, how do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord? Have you seen him? No. But have you seen him now through the scriptures? Now when the gospel is preached and said to you, every punishment that we deserve has been paid in full by Jesus, that there is no penalty on you anymore. Do we believe that? Every curse from your life has been nailed on the cross, for he was made to be a curse for you. And you are no longer under curse, but you are under Abraham's blessing. Do you believe that? Yeah. Unless you believe that, 
you cannot live a freedom from curse. We didn't, we didn't thought that we are, we are always sinners. Oh, okay. Let me show you. Will you believe when you see it? I will. Okay. Give me Colossians chapter 2. That's why for me to believe in my heart, I must first have the scripture. Did you have a mobile ring? Yeah. Okay. Now, how come the mobile rang her number, not yours? So because we all have our own numbers. So the person who is dialing is dialing a particular number. The connectivity is done. Right? And now the person can talk. In the same way the Bible has got numbers that you can connect it to heaven using those numbers. And when the connectivity is done, all you need to do is believe what it says and that will turn into a physical manifestation. Did she finish her talk? Was that short? Yeah. That's how women talk. <laughs> she said, <"Hey>, no. <laughs> but when it comes to God, do they do, do they make small talk? Long talk. Yeah, Colossians 2 was number 13. And when you were dead in trespasses. When? When you were dead in trespasses. When you were dead? Yeah. Did we commit sin? Yeah. Yes. 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 So did our spirit man die? when Adam committed sin. So from the time the spirit man died, it was replaced with carnal mind. So was sin the food for the carnal mind? So is he enjoying the pleasure of sin even though he knows it's going to bring self-destruction? Yes. Does he have the power to rebel sin? No. no. Because his nature is sin. Are you following? So we were dead in our trespasses then. Sorry. And the uncircumcision of the flesh. Now, circumcision is to cut off a portion of the physical body of a male. Now, in the old covenant under the law of Moses, there was circumcision. And that circumcision was a seal or a, or a, or a sign that this person belongs to God in a covenant. But in the new covenant, there is no circumcision of a physical body, but there is a circumcision of your heart. So the carnal nature has been cut off and now the spirit nature is planted in that person's heart. That's what he says. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive. Now when he made you alive, did he make you alive with a new nature or the old nature? New nature. New nature. Together with? With his. So how did it become new? Because when Jesus died, he died with our sin nature put in him. But when he rose again, he rose again with the new nature which is with us united. So sin nature of ours qualified him to die. But when he rose again, he never rose again with sin nature, but he rose again with God nature which is implanted in us because we are united with him in baptism. So, when Jesus was made alive after his death, the resurrection together with us, he dealt with sins and he also dealt with sin nature by which we receive forgiveness of some sins, all sins. Do you know you have been forgiven already? So somebody will say, you mean to say, because I am forgiven, I can go and commit more sin? No. Because you have got the new nature, the new nature rebels against sin. But you must live, you must live your life according to the new nature. Okay. 
You said you must live your life a new nature. You went to a restaurant yeah. and you got 10 euros. Yeah. So what do you believe? You got 10 or 100? 10. So will you order for 20? No. Why not? I don't want to end up in doing the wash up. <laughs> so you know and that's why you will order only up till 10. Yeah. Now do you know you got God nature? Yes. So will you now live according to the new nature or the old nature. Yes. And that's the name that's that is the challenge. Did Jesus' his nature make him tolerate sickness or disease or he went after them and destroyed them? He destroyed them. So you with the new nature will tolerate or destroy? destroy. Ray, give me a smile here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm challenged. Everybody is challenged. Everybody is challenged, but the question is, are you going to believe what is written? Or are you going to believe? That's the challenge. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you came here, did you get the what do you got? Passcode? Yeah. What what they what the code? Air code. Ah, air. Air. Air code. Air code. Yeah. Did they give you the air code? No. So you find addresses without an air code? Uh, I knew where the hotel was. Okay, what about an unknown place? Oh, I'd use the air code, yeah. yeah. So if that lady who travels with you in the car says, take a right turn, will you take? Yes. Yes. That lady who travels with you in the car. Are you going to question her? See, the ladies know what I'm talking about. You're still confused. Which lady? Come on, that yeah, GPS yeah. lady, brother. <laughs> Sometimes I do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you must think you're very intelligent. I should never say that lady. I should no, say yeah. the Google lady. Yeah, Google. Yeah, I make a mistake of confusing you. Because I said that lady, you're still thinking, which lady is traveling with me? <laughs> okay. Now when you miss the mark, does she fire you? No, she, she takes you back on the route. No, she says, I'll only reroute you. But a real woman, will she reroute you or fire you? Praise God. So if you follow the instruction, will you reach the destination? Yes. So if you follow this yeah. instruction. I must learn to trust. This is, this is what's coming up for me. Yeah. Trust. Because we have been living based on sense knowledge, but you're no longer having the old SIM card. Your SIM card has been changed to God nature. And that's why when you have fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit, you can point this scripture and say to yourself, Holy Spirit, help me. This is what the scripture says. Help me. I want to know this is true. Lord, I believe. Help my own belief is a prayer I say. You say, but do you show the scripture which your unbelief to believe? What do you mean, brother? Can a person believe without the promise? No, they need, they need the scripture. So are you taking this scripture and saying, God, help me to believe? Are you only saying, God, help me to believe without a scripture? Without the scripture. So from now on, what will you do? With the scripture. Read more scripture. Yeah, I've begun already. So from the time you have begun, has it given you some portion of change in your life? I can't tell. At least some portion of peace in your mind? Um, hope. Hope. So where there was no hope, you got hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. So faith works where there is hope. Hallelujah. Faith cannot work where there is no hope. So hope is spiritual, which is in the future. But you want to turn that hope, which is spiritual, into physical. And there comes faith to help you. So faith is the word in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So the substance called faith is stored in your mouth first 
as you are hearing, deposit in your heart, and now when you ask the Holy Spirit, He will turn your hope into faith and change things from the spiritual to the physical. Example: the lady was hopeless for twelve years, a bleeding problem. But the day somebody spoke to her, she got hope. And the moment she got hope, she changed her words, and she said to herself, "If I touch his garment, I shall be healed." The Bible says she continued to say to herself, "If I touch his garment, I shall be healed." Now, when she is facing the situation, who will take me to Jesus? She never asked that. How will I go through the crowd? She never asked that. I am so weak. She never asked that. She never spoke any of the situations. She only spoke. If I touch his garment, I shall be healed. So what was she growing? Faith. Now, were there other people who touched Jesus? Yeah. Were they the apostles? Yeah. Were they the crowd? Yeah. yeah. But did Jesus say the power went out of me? Yeah. yeah. No. 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 When this woman touched, he said the power went out of me. That's what I mean. Yeah. So why did he say the power went out of me? He felt she the glow with him. She, her he, faith took it. He knew about her faith. So how come it did not go out of others? Then others touched. They, they didn't have the same faith, the same conviction. So how did she get? She built it up. Confessing. Someone said she built it up. Yeah, she built it up. How? By confessing her faith. By believing. By believing. By saying it. Romans ten verse eight. So was the system of connectivity to God? Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. The word of faith coming out of your mouth is spiritual, but it has the power to go forth and bring back to you physical manifestation. Now this is possible. To every one of us, because we are spirit people. Can I? Because that this I think is a place where people make a mistake. Because um, I've heard from very spiritual people who really kind of try to follow the word of God, and they pick a line and they keep seeing it to themselves, saying it to themselves, and they envision maybe having living in a new house. This is actually uh, one one friend of mine, and she really really wanted to live in the new house. But the Bible says you believe, like. I forget the exact how it's put, but believing through um, the true the word of God, the whole the whole truths in the Bible. So, like, if you have a vision that's a selfish vision, it's unlikely to manifest in your life through the power of God because it's not uh, taking the whole of the Bible and the the truths in the Bible. Like, we are called to have a vision that's Uh, selfless and it's not you know so there is a selfless vision and there is a selfish vision yes. first thing is when you are a spirit man you become selfless by nature you don't might be you did not see a vision <clears throat> but this woman she made a vision and when she made a vision she spoke a vision she not only spoke a vision she acted on a vision because she came out of a house and for her to come out of the house is high risk because if anybody comes to know under the law she can be stoned to death because she is unclean but what she spoke did she take the corresponding action so is it possible for a person to repeat the scriptures a thousand times but never step out in action so speaking it over and over should build my confidence in believing by putting it into action now when she touched jesus did she pray god jesus please heal me no did she go around telling everybody keep me in prayer no did she call everybody and said pray for me or did she build up a faith she built up a faith Now, when she started twelve years back, she was a bad conductor. Power doesn't flow through this, but power surely flows through the metal. So, when she was a bad conductor, things went worse. 
when she started believing in the heart things change and she became a good conductor so when she was touching jesus can i touch jesus yes the word of god is jesus so will the same power flow through me when i become a good conductor yes, yes. yes. so who decides who is going to be a good or bad myself myself so is it a practice yes is it about learning the system yes is it about applying the system yes and who so applies the system can he change from bad conductor to good conductor yes yeah. now will the power of god flow through him yes now not only flow to him and is victorious now he can use the same power for others that they also can receive the miracle in their life so how does this work two things if you confess with your mouth what that jesus christ is my lord and how will you confess when you know what he has done for you on the cross because if you confess there is a word if condition apply if you confess with your lips that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised you from the dead you will be saved now in the old covenant how will you be saved by your performance in the new covenant how will you be saved by believing in the performance of christ so which one do we practice my performance or believe in christ performance believe in christ performance do you understand yes yeah so with your new spirit being do you have the authority now to confess and believe and destroy those things that are torturing and tormenting us so now today you heard that you are a spirit being so who is in charge are you in charge of the things happening Oh, sorry, Maharaj. But the spirit in me is in charge. Yeah. So now, will you tolerate anything? No, I shouldn't. So now, are you going back with new hope, new confidence, new belief, yes. new result oriented? I am trying. Yeah, I do. I am trying. When somebody is trying, is that person going to be at rest or unrest? So I do, but then something happens that I have, big, you know, um, like say for example, I believe in great things about my, myself and my future, and tomorrow I have to travel to see some doctors and have some scans, and they will tell me something, the opposite, and okay. then you have to try extra hard. You don't have to try extra hard. You have to believe and be at rest. Yes. You know, you know, your victory is going to be determined by under how much pressure you can still be at rest. So your battle is not to receive. Your battle is to continue to be at rest. I'm doing the problem. Okay. The problem is the problem is my focus is so much on the result that I get into unrest. My focus is not on the result because the end result is God said I'm already healed. So I'm not interested in healing. I'm interested in continuing to believe what He said. When does a person get into unrest? When they listen to Satan. When they listen to the lies of Satan. So even if the lies come. are you supposed to receive it no as a spirit being from today are you in authority to cast it out yes yes so will that give you confidence yes and that's the practice of a person who believes because for him every day is supernatural so when you are told by the doctor you go into the natural realm whereas you have been created to operate in the spirit, spirit realm mm -hmm. so where do you get the result natural realm or spirit realm spirit. Spirit. 
So even though there is pressure, will you take the right destination? So before I go, I will hear from you that I am so much at rest and I can see so many supernatural things happening because I don't want to live any more natural life. I am called to live supernatural life because I am not a spiritual being. I am a spirit being. Because if I have to ask those who believe the scriptures, are you a spiritual being or a spirit being? Most of the time I'll hear, I'm a spiritual being. Spiritual being does not operate in the supernatural. Spirit being operates in the supernatural. Why? Because you have been recreated in Christ with the very nature of Christ, with the very mind of Christ, with the very faith of Christ. And all I need to do is operate in that system. Sister, do you have any issue in your body? Um, I haven't. I, I had a thyroid gland removed and I had a lot of problems. Um, now, do you have anything? Um, I'm, I'm asking the Lord and thanking the Lord for... I asked you a simple question. Yes or no? No. no. The lady behind no. The baby behind. Everybody who has come, have come with no. There, there's one who has come, yes, yeah. And spinal pain in my head and uh, osteoporosis and depression. Yeah, can you tell me what it is? Osteoporosis and depression. Osteoporosis and depression. Osteoporosis and depression. What, what is all? Osteoporosis and weakening of the thickness of the bone. So you are suffering from weakening of the bone? Yeah, I just I, I understand that. I don't understand medical term. Okay, so is it causing pain to you? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Now, Chris, are you a spirit being? Spirit. Yeah. I'm asking you, are you a spirit being? I'm a spirit being. So do you have the authority to cast it out? I do. So do you have the authority to heal him? I do. So shall we fix it up? Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Can you touch your body? Yes. He's a good conductor. Let's sit down and just pray. I sit down and say yes. What do you think, brother? What is Chris saying? Is it, is it okay to sit down? Okay. You can, when you are a good conductor, let the wire be hanging here or there. The connectivity is there. The reason I'm sharing this is because I must understand it's not the posture that you take. It is who you are. You are a spirit being. Right, Chris? And being a spirit being, can you connect to God who is a spirit? Yes. Now is the Holy Spirit going to help you when you say the, when you believe in the right thing according to the word? Yes. Okay. I want you to, brother, I want you to listen to what he says. Okay. Pay attention to what he says. That's all. And agree to what he says. The spirit of God will do the rest. Are you ready? Both of you close your eyes and say this, Chris, you say this. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. For teaching me today. For teaching me today. I am a spirit man. I am a spirit man. Born of the spirit. Born of the spirit. And therefore. And therefore. I have been made a new creation. I have been made a new creation. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. With this new nature. With this new nature. With this new spirit, with this new spirit, I can operate. I can operate just like, just like Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, apostles, apostles, the 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 disciples, the disciples, just like the early church, just like the early church, believing in faith, believing in faith. I now speak. I now speak to his bones. To his bones. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I take authority over you. I take authority over you. You spirit. You spirit. That is causing. That is causing. Weakness in his bones. Weakness in his bones. Be uprooted. Be uprooted. And be planted into the sea. And be planted into the sea. I do not doubt. I do not doubt. But I choose to believe. But I choose to believe. 
with my new nature. With my new nature. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every infirmity. Every infirmity has been cast out of his body. Has been cast out of his body. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit has recreated his bones. Has recreated his bones. Whatever problems were there. Whatever problems were there. They are all uprooted. They are all uprooted. And this brother. And this brother is completely healed. Is completely healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for teaching me. For teaching me. Because I am a spirit man. Because I am a spirit man. I possess. I possess. By faith. By faith. Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. The power. The power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have set my brother free. You have set my brother free. Amen. Amen. Now, brother, you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive my miracle. I receive my miracle. I too. I too. Believe in you. Believe in you. And I am. And I am. A new creation. A new creation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For you have set me free. You have set me free. I am loosed. I am loosed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now begin to move and do what you could not do. Yeah, my name is Fred Olsen, my head and spine and shoulders. What did he say? Shut up. He's free. He's free. He feels free in his stiffness. Yeah, my spine is, is loose and always way. My spine is getting loose. Mm. Yeah. Chris, did the man get healed? He did. Yeah. And how many years was he sick? 45. 45 years is on. 45 is My God. <laughs> Did you feel this today coming in? Huh? You were you felt this before Chris pray, prayed on you? No, I just no. want you to come here and listen to what he said. And to no, hear. You know, I'm, I'm asking you if you had pain, pain before yeah. Chris yeah, sure. has it on my life. Yeah. yeah, 45 years. Ray. Yeah. Because you believe you are a spirit man, you get connected to God using your spirit. Now, did I need to touch him? Um, Chris was doing the, the praying. So all I need to do is teach Chris. Now, could Chris get the job done? Yeah. Now, when Chris said, yes, I do believe, did he become a good conductor? Yes. yes. Yeah. Now, he could have said, I believe, but don't ask me, please. Did he say any of those things? No. So now what you heard, is it available for all of us? Yes. 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 So what's happening now? Pardon? What is our Ask response or what is your our action now? What is your response from now on? That your spirit being. Ray. What is, your, what is your response? Okay, Ray, let me help you. Sister. Helena. 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 Elena, mm -hmm. do I know you? I saw you before. <coughs> she knows you, but you know her or not. Yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have any issue in your body um, which needs to be killed? Just, I suppose, the, the fear and nervousness that's affecting me, I think. Yeah. That's all. Well, could be lots of um, that. Yes. Any physical? Pain. No pains. No pains. Only the mind. Mind. So now with what you heard, yeah. are you a new creation? Yes. Or are you becoming a new creation? Yeah, I am. You are a new creation. Yes. So has God given you a new spirit to you? Yes. So are you a spiritual being or a spirit being? Spirit. Spirit. Okay. So do you carry the authority in the name of Jesus? So can you tell that is disturbing you in your mind to get out? Yes. And do you believe yes. you are in charge? Yes. So will it get out? Yes. Ray, watch this. Okay? Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Another man here to same anxiety and fear. Terrible yeah. fear. Terrible fear and anxiety. Okay. Now, the question that I asked you, 
Do you also believe you are a spirit being? Even when he's born of Christ, John. Sorry? He's born of Christ, he believes that. So, I must believe that I'm a spirit being, not a spiritual being. A spirit being is a spirit that can get connected to God, which is not possible if a person is not born again. So the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord God and Savior and you confess it, you are a spirit being that you have authority over all kind of fear. Do you believe that? I believe you have the authority over your fear. I, f I believe I'm, I'm, I'm so weak that I don't have authority over your fear. He doesn't feel he has authority. I feel powerless. Okay. Driven by the fear. Okay, driven okay, by the okay. Let me help you. Let me help you. Is the gospel about feeling or is the gospel about knowing the truth? No, no, no. Why do you give him the answer? Let him answer himself. She's my helper. <laughs> but if she's your helper and if you are believing in what she's saying and you're not believing yourself, that helper cannot do any good. She can give you oral exam, 100 out of 100. But practically, you'll go home the same. I'm set. It's okay. I'm set. I realize that. So based on the scripture, my friend, are you a spirit being? I'm a spirit being very well. Jesus said, the word of God says, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. So are you a new creature? The scripture says, no, no, give him a chance. The scripture says, do you believe that Christ died for you? Do you believe that he was buried with you and you were buried with him? I will be buried with him, yeah. What did he say? He will be buried with him. Not he will. The Bible says he, you were buried with him. And the word of God also says, when God raised Jesus from the dead, he has, in Christ, raised you and given you a new life, made you a new creation. Are you willing to agree to that? And the next moment, the fear will be gone. All that uneasiness will be gone. Terrible, terrible um, heart issues as well and things like that. All that you're talking fear, to me. All, the fear is creating all this. Okay, all that you're talking to me is you are well trained to think about what you're going through. Yes, very well trained. Well, too well trained. Okay. Now you got to train yourself what Jesus went through for you. Yeah, I, 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 so I, if you're thinking about what you are going, instead of thinking about what Jesus went through to help you get your freedom, you experience freedom. The wounds he suffered on the cross, I feel I had them and they may be killed by people that are ignoring me like doctors and things. Colitis is Yeah, he, he thinks like Jesus was abandoned. He was also abandoned in life. Yeah, but Jesus was abandoned, the Bible says, so that you are accepted in the family of God. You are adopted in the family of God. Jesus went through rejection so that the Father now accepts us and adopts us in his own family and he calls you Son of God. That's what the scripture says. Okay, are you ready? Yeah, and just maybe a prayer for colitis as well. Colitis. Okay. Okay. We are going to deal with both. Ray, are you going to help me? I will. Can you sit at the side? Yeah. Sure. And you are going to be a good conductor. Yeah. Without any question. Without any question. Believe what the scripture says. Yes. 
and the next moment you will see the power of God go through a, through you into a body because of believing. I have one question now before we start. Um, there is nothing physical, she said, though. So how am I? Going there to is know? physical. Colitis is a very, very physical uh, issue that she has no control over bounds. It's a very, very uh, terrible infirmity because of ulcers. And the good news is, after we finish our prayer, whatever we are going to say, you're going to take her number. Okay. She will surely give you. Right. And you have to only ask her one question. Does it still continue? That's all. Okay. And you will be, this is for you to help you understand the truth. Out of her mouth will come. Brother, honestly speaking, after that prayer, there are no more symptoms in my body. But now I understand, just as you are a spirit being, I am also a spirit being, and I have been authorized to deal with it, kill it, and destroy it from the root. Okay? okay, brother. okay brother. So in this, we are going to kill two unbelief. Yours and hers as well. Is it a good deal? Yeah. Yeah, hold her hand. Hold her hand. Yeah. Yeah, close your eyes. Concentrate and say this prayer, Ray, and my brother behind us. Uh, you, yeah, you. Nana grabbed this opportunity without telling her. She already put a hand on it and said, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm going to kill it myself. Okay. Father, Nana, say this. Father. Father. Brother Ray, say this together. Father. Father. I thank you, I thank you for teaching us, for teaching us today. today. That in Christ, that in Christ, we are, we are a new creation. A new creation. We have been reborn. We have been reborn. Regenerated. Regenerated. Recreated. Recreated. With a new spirit. With a new spirit. I declare. I declare. I am a spirit being. I am a spirit being. And therefore. And therefore, I operate, I operate in the spiritual, in the spiritual, spiritual supernatural, supernatural, unwin, uh, uh, unseen world. Unseen world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive, I receive the truth, the truth, according to the scriptures, according to the scriptures. In the name of Jesus, in the name, in the name of, of Jesus, Jesus, my old, my old, my old carnal mind, carnal mind, is destroyed. Is destroyed. is destroyed. And I thank you, Lord, and I and thank I thank you, Lord, Lord for giving me, for giving me a new heart, a new heart, a spirit filled heart, a spiritual heart. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. I believe. In my spirit, in my spirit, is the fullness of joy. Fullness, the fullness of, joy. of joy. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. That I speak to this that infirmity. Speak to this infirmity. Speak to this infirmity. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Be completely destroyed. Be completely, be completely destroyed. destroyed. I have the mind of Christ. I have, I have the, the mind, mind of Christ. Christ. And the wisdom of God. And the, and the wisdom, wisdom of God. Is formed within me. Is formed within me. With the same wisdom. With the, with same, the same wisdom. That God created. That God, that God created. created. When he said, when he when he said, said let, there be light, let there be light, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God created the light, created, the light, created, everything, created everything. The same mind of Christ, the same same mind of Christ has been given unto me, has been given given unto me and creating and creating new things, new things, new things in this person's in life. Person's in this person's life. life. Everything Everything, Everything from the kingdom of heaven. From the kingdom, from the of, kingdom heaven. of heaven. I thank you, Lord. I thank, I thank you, Lord. Lord. Fear, fear does not come from you. Does not does come not from, from you. Because, because, because you have not given any of us. You have not, you have not given, given any, any of us. The spirit of fear. The spirit, the spirit of, of fear. fear. But you have given us. But you, but you have, given, have us given us power. 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 Love, love and sound mind. And sound sound mind. mind. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus every fear, every fear is, gone. is gone. And this gone. person 
And this person. And this person is completely healed. Is completely, is completely healed. healed. Completely delivered. Completely delivered. Every, stronghold Every stronghold in the mind is destroyed. Is destroyed. Is destroyed. And this person, and and this person, person is set free. Is set free. From mental, from mental sickness. From mental sickness. Physical sickness. Physical sickness. Physical sickness. Physical sickness. Spiritual sickness. Spiritual sickness. Spiritual sickness. 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 In every area of in their life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Every organ. Every organ. Every tissue. Every tissue. Every cell. Every cell has received. Has received. God's power. God's power. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. And has set. And and has set. And has set. Every organ. Every organ. Every organ. Is functioning now. Is functioning, functioning now. Perfectly. 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 No more malfunction. No more malfunction. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Tell, tell us when he was praying, what happened to you? Did anything happen to you? Me? Uh, One minute, Nana. I didn't feel anything. I just felt uh, grateful for the prayer. Yeah. That's all. So now, are you in peace? Yes. 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 Now, keep that peace going and keep on believing okay. that because you are a spirit being, yes. because you are a spirit being, you are in authority over that sickness and disease and it is completely destroyed. So when you are going back home, go back believing and thanking God that you are set free. Okay? He will call you probably tomorrow morning and you will have the symptoms by morning that there is no colitis, no mucus coming out, you are in peace. Well, it's, it's managed under medication at the moment. It's, it's only when I go for colonoscopy, you know. Okay, but at least there will be symptoms, right? Uh, colitis has a symptom of bleeding. Bleeding mucus. She said she's being now currently under control with medications. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, but but now when you go and do whenever you're doing, yeah. okay, the doctor will be amazed that he cannot trace Praise any God. ulcer inside of you. Oh my God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Keep the number. She and give your number. She will surely call you and tell you. The day she goes for medical report, that she is completely set free, no ulcers in her body. Why? Because now she believes she is a spirit being and only a spirit being can get connected to God who is a spirit. Have, have we time, brother, for me, to, for, for <coughs> me for to do a healing for me? What healing do you need? Um... Fear and anxiety. Uh, that's the, that's the medicine. That what you spoke, when she gives the testimony, you'll be saying, "Oh my God, I just spoke words, and it worked." And you can say the same words for you. It's on the video. Yes. Yeah. And when you sp speak it over and over again for myself, I can for do yourself, it for myself, yeah. you will yourself see recovery taking place. Because now you believe you are a spirit man. And spirit man has been redeemed from carnal mind. You have been given the righteousness of God. Therefore, it is your birthright to speak. And the words that you speak shall come to pass. So now you know the system. Father, we thank you. As your people are watching this right now, O oh Lord, I thank you. That every person who is hearing the word is experiencing the victory in their life. It is your spirit that has got connected with their spirit that this authority is manifesting in people's life, in their own life. And we all are now walking in our inheritance of taking the kingdom of God by force. Thank you for teaching us this truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.